I hope you're ready to sew a fanny pack. I hope you're ready to have some fun. Fanny pack. Boom, boom, boom. Hey, welcome to my channel. I'm Jessica. This is what we're making today. This is a fully lined bum bag, fanny pack, waist satchel, waist bag, whatever you want to call it. Fully lined bag to wear when you need to be hands free. You can wear it around your waist like this. You can wear it across your chest like this. You could wear it as a hat maybe. I don't know what you're into. You do you. You do you. But I'm going to walk you through how to add the lining to this bag. The pattern is from Proper Fit Clothing. So go there first so you can get the templates and then we'll get started. To cut my fabric, I made my own templates. This is a plastic cutting mat from the Dollar Tree that I trace the templates with a Sharpie over it and then I just cut it. Links for that in the description below. For the side panel, in the pattern, the side panel comes to a perfect point down here. What I actually did was I took my ruler adding a quarter inch to the edge. So where this would be right here, this would be a straight line right here in their pattern piece. I just drew down a quarter inch line from it and extended it. These are our templates that we cut and prepared. Here are all of our outer pieces. So we have our side panels. We have our front panel. We have our pocket panel, which will go over the top like that. We have our top and bottom flaps. Top and bottom flaps. And we have our back panel. Good. These are all of our exterior pieces. For the lining, <clears throat> you're going to need the top and bottom flaps. You will need a lining piece for the pocket panel and you will need a lining piece for the front panel. So for the back panel lining, you're gonna cut a piece of fabric that is five and a half inches by 11 and one quarter inch. So five and a half by 11 and a quarter. Again, all this information is in the description below and on my website. You're gonna also need a zipper. I like to use zipper tape and you will need one inch cotton webbing. This is from Amazon. This is probably some of the cheapest stuff you're going to find. You can get all sorts of colors on Etsy though. And then this is the buckle I like to use. This is actually for dog collars, um, but I like that it has this curve on it to go around your waist. This is from Etsy. I'll have the link below. And then this is a cord holder. And that's it. Let's get sewing. To start out, we're going to start with our pocket pieces. We're going to have our exterior pocket piece and we're going to have our lining pocket piece. I've put my, my exterior piece and my lining piece right sides together, totally square. Um, you need to figure out where the top of your exterior pocket piece is going to be. So if you want your pocket piece to be, to be like this and this is going to be the top, then this is the line we're going to sew along right now. Okay? We're just attaching the lining to the back of this. So right sides together, make sure you know which side you're sewing on. All right, using a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm just gonna go ahead and sew a straight line. I'm gonna take this to the iron and I'm going to flip this. I'm gonna press it just like this, okay? So that we don't have, so it's all nice and cleaned up. Back from pressing, I have my pocket piece now. This is the top of it. Here's the lining. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to give it just a nice top stitch to make sure this lining doesn't move around too much. I'm going to use an eighth of an inch seam allowance this time. And I'm just going to do one quick run over. There you go. See, I like to use a thread that will match nicely with this because my lines aren't always perfectly straight. See on the back, you can kind of see. There's, there's a little bit of um, discrepancy there, but um, I'm, not, I'm not worried about the interior pieces. It's the exterior pieces that I want to look nice and finished. So now we're going to attach the 
front pocket piece to the front panel piece. Just like before, we're gonna figure out where the top of our front panel piece is going to be. For me, obviously, it's going to be up here. And then I am just going to place my pocket piece matching the bottom edges. And I'm just gonna place it on there and pin in place on, just a couple pins on the edge. Use, um, Wonder Clips are also great for this, but I don't have those near me. So now in the original pattern for this fanny pack, they have you sew a line straight down the middle to have two different pockets. Um, but neither one of these pockets ends up being big enough to hold a large smartphone. So instead, I sew two lines so that the front, the middle pocket is big enough for a large smartphone. And then the side pockets are good for like chapsticks or some cash. Also, I've noticed that this gives the fanny pack a nice structure. So instead of maybe being like this, it's more like this when you wear it, which is quite nice. I like to use my clover chalk pen. And I'm just gonna mark a couple of straight lines. Now, if you wanna use your smartphone, um, normally I would lay my smartphone down in the middle and then I would just mark lines on either side of it just to make sure it's big enough. I'm currently using my smartphone to film this tutorial. So that is not an option. Now we have these tiny side pockets and one large pocket in the middle. When sewing in the lining, I like to pre-sew a bit because it will help later. This is the top of my back panel. This is my top flap lining. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sew along this line right here. I'm just gonna sew right there. The flat part of the, of the flap against the top of the back lining at a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, so you might be asking why didn't we just cut this piece originally like this? Well, whenever the lining is in the bag, um, I like to sew this seam allowance into the exterior structure. I'll show you when we get there, but also it just gives it a nice shape inside of the lining. If the lining's all one piece, it can kind of bunch up and this keeps the inside of the bag nice and structured just like the outside of the bag. So we prep that one and now we're gonna prep the front panel. Now this is the top of the front panel. This is the bottom of the front panel. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sew the curved edge to the bottom of the front panel. So all we gotta do is find our midpoint on each. There we go. Just need a little bit so I can see, okay. And then I already know this is my midpoint here because it's creased from when I cut it out. So I just line these up. I'm gonna start at the middle and I'm gonna work my way towards one edge, and then I will start at the middle and then work my way towards the other edge. So, here we go, start at the middle, quarter inch seam allowance again. I'm just going nice and slow with this. See, once, once I see it starting to diverge from each other, I just pull the top piece over very, very gently to meet the bottom piece. So now I have a piece of tape here that helps me with where my quarter inch is on this side because I'm gonna be sewing this way now. Now we have our pieces prepped and we can continue. So we have our pocket panel with our front panel attached. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our zipper and my zipper is 14 inches long and we're gonna turn it right side down and we're just gonna clip it. Now my zipper is a little bit, it's 14 inches, which is a little bit longer 
Um, I like to use zippers. I like my zipper tape to be just a little bit longer than I need it to be. So now we want to add this lining. This is the front panel lining that has the bottom flap already attached to it. We're gonna add this lining over our front panel and we're just gonna pop up the clips and pin it in. So we're gonna sew the lining piece and the exterior piece to the zipper all at the same time. Get our zipper foot on. I'm using a Juki 2010Q as my sewing machine. I really like it. It's a good industrial sewing machine. It's really good for making bags or sewing with um, vinyl or leather. I have a small Bernina as well that's not quite as good at handling the thicker stuff, but it's also one of my favorite sewing machines. So. so we're just using a quarter inch seam allowance. You're gonna wanna pay attention to where your zipper is. So I have my zipper pull right here. Whenever it's time to go around it, it lift up, lift up the presser foot, and pull it past. If you're using zipper tape, be super careful right now because that zipper pull will come right off the end. I probably should have stitched a line over that. Here we go. So like I said, just to make sure this, see this, this is gonna come right off. So just to make sure this isn't a problem later, I am going to sew a line over this very, very slowly. Cause even though these are plastic zipper tape, um, I have had them break my needle before. So it's nice and slow helps. that side let's do the other side here's where we're at we have the back with the lining and we have the front so we have this nice and pressed and now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do about an eighth of an inch seam allowance top stitch right along this edge so when you're doing this you're gonna want to make sure this bottom flap is not tucked in anywhere. You don't want to. You don't want to sew that in at this, at this point. All right, there we go. I have a nice little top stitch all along. Okay, so now we're going to add the exterior top flap, right sides together. Let's find the midpoint of this. Just going to mark it with a little bit of chuck. And then let's find the midpoint of this because we're going to be sewing the top flap on on the curved edge. These are friction erasable pens. Um, when you get them, when you get the mark hot with an iron, it disappears, but not forever. So do not use these on like out here thinking, oh, I'll just iron it off and you'll never see it again because you will. So just use it on places where it's not gonna show anyways, right? So like in the seam allowance or on the back of your fabric. Okay, so just like for the lining, I'm gonna start in the middle and then I'm gonna work my way around and then I'm gonna come back to the middle and I'm gonna work my way the other way. And I'm gonna still use my zipper foot since I'm sewing next to the zipper. And if you see, this is being pulled up while I'm, I'm working on this. So if, if you're working with this and you're thinking that you're, it's not going as smooth as you think it should, um, it, it's not supposed to go that smooth. You're, you're pulling on the other side of the bag, right? Because it's a curve. Now we 
have that on like that, see? So when you flip it this way, So we're going to find the midpoint again. Mark. So now we're going to attach, line up this midpoint to this midpoint. Just like that. Just kind of clip it. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go around, around the curved edge using a quarter inch seam allowance with our zipper foot on. We're going to just go along like this. If it starts getting frustrating, or make sure you're, you're, you're just worried about this here. Don't worry about what's going on back here. Don't worry about what's going on down at the bottom. Just focus on making sure that this here is lined up properly. Let's go on this side. Just like we did on the bottom part, we're going to top stitch. Just go nice and slow. We have a nice top stitch now. So now we're going to add on the side panels, which are our triangular type shapes. Um, when we're adding this on, we want to sew it to the pocket panel and the front panel, but we do not want to sew it to this lining panel back here. So we're going to make sure we move this away out of the way. Bye bye. Okay. So we're going to sew it straight edges together, starting at the top of the zipper. And I will use a couple clips just to make sure it stays. And going all the way down, let's put our normal presser foot back on to help hold it all down. <coughs> Good life. All right, here we go. You can trim your zipper before this if you feel like it. Um, I'm okay with it right now. Just sew it down. Okay, and there's that. And that'll open just like that. And now we're gonna add it to the other side as well. Same method. Again, pull that, pulling the lining piece back. All right, I'm just gonna go along the edge again. Quarter inch seam allowance from the bottom to the top. Again. There we go. Nice side panels. So now we're going to add the bottom panel on. So we're going to take this. And we're not going to include the lining when we're sewing. So again, move the lining out of the way. We're going to mark the center of this one, of our front panel, the bottom of our front panel. Here's our center. And then we're going to mark the center of the curved edge of our bottom panel. Here we go. And then we're just gonna line them up, right sides together. 
Make sure we get the pocket panel and the front panel included, but not the lining, not the uh, interior bag lining. And just like we did before, we're gonna follow the curve around, starting in the middle, working our way to the ends. bottom piece as well as the top piece. Now if you want to go ahead and top stitch down right here along this edge, feel free to do that. I'm going to top stitch along the bottom flap. So we have our eight inch piece of cotton webbing and we have the female end of the buckle and we're just going to put it through here just like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to just sew the ends of this first so that it stays put using about a quarter inch seam allowance again. Now we're going to sew it on the edge. When this opens up like this, I want to make sure this is curved the right way. Right now it's not, so I know I need to flip it like that. I'm going to have it curved this way so that when it opens, it curves the correct way. Now we're going to attach the other piece of webbing. Um, you can cut this anywhere between like 30 to 40 inches really depending on um, who it's for. Uh, it's always best to go bigger just in case because you can always cut it down later to a smaller size. We're going to add it to the other side strap in the same place on that bottom edge. So before we add the back panel, we're going to want to finish up some of the interior lining pieces. What we're going to do is we're going to sew the sides of the lining together, right sides together first, and then we'll sew the bottom, but we'll leave about uh, five inches open so that we can berth the bag when we're done. You can see I line up the bottom with the bottom. But up here, it's kind of a little bunched up. I'm not worried about that because when I sew the back panel on, I'm going to close up this up here. So I'm only going to sew from where my thumb is to where my thumb is. Over here is going to stay open because that will close up when we put the back panel on. We'll do the same for the other side. You can always use clips here too if it's giving you a bit of a, of a fight. Now we're just going to do the bottom. bottom with a nice big space left over here to birth it later. So now we're going to add the back panel on. Make sure the zipper's not all the way closed. If there's still a little bit open over there. Tuck in all of our straps into the middle. Just like that. And we want it to kind of be like this. 
So we're going to take this big piece here and add it. Now, when we're adding this piece, when we're adding this piece, I do want to include the top of the lining right here, but that's it. The rest of it I don't want in there. So this is the top flap and this is the lining here. I'm going to go ahead and pin it with my clips to make sure I don't forget. I want that included. That's just going to kind of keep the lining in place a little bit in your bag. So now we're just going to clip on the back panel onto the bag. start from the top and go around. Here's the top. So now we're going to sew the bottom. top and the bottom. Now we're going to do the sides. For the sides, I'm going to look on the other side when I'm sewing just to make sure I get all of the pieces. truth. See what happens. So I'm going to reach in through the lining and I'm going to open up that zipper some more. Let me pull it all out. through that hole in the lining to help push out all these pieces. Check to make sure everything is good. All right, so here we go. Here's your fanny pack. This is very cute. So to close up the inside, you can hand sew it or you can machine sew it. I prefer to hand sew it, but I'm going to show you how to machine sew it. So all I do is I kind of just tug on it a little bit and wrap them in. This does not have to be perfect and you just kind of fold it down. Now this is not going to be great because I'm using black thread and normally I would not use black thread um, when closing this seam allowance. It's best to use a thread that matches your fabric so you don't see it. If you're hand sewing it together, you have a little bit more freedom because hand sewing hides a lot more than machine sewing, but it's okay. So we're just going to go along here and do about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. It's nice and tight. You don't want it too bulky. But again, if your thread is the same color as your fabric, you're going to get away with a lot more than I'm getting away with right now. So there is... There you go. Even then, it's not that bad. Stick it in there. And there we go. Here's that. Finish up the buckle. I'm going to set aside. I just set the buckle. Okay, let's take our long end. If you're using one of these, um, put this on now. And 
and then we're going to take our male end and we want to make sure and this I'll sometimes do this clip together that it's the direction we want it to go in make sure this is nice and straight you're going to feed it through here this is the one closest to the clip and then feed it through the second one it's furthest just like that okay just like that. And then all we gotta do now is close up these raw edges and we're done. So you're gonna take this piece here and you're gonna fold it once and then you're gonna fold it twice to make a nice little rectangle and all your raw edges are hid and we're just gonna do a square around it and then maybe an X in the middle just to keep it secure. We're done. So thanks for joining me today. I hope my walkthrough helps you understand a little bit better how to make the bag, but also how to add the lining to the bag. Um, a fully lined bag, it's just so much more finished and so much more polished than having those raw edges, even if you attach the bias binding to it. If you have any questions, let me know. Stay tuned because I'm gonna show you how to make the cutest fanny pack for kiddos. It's adorable. You're gonna wanna make a million of them. Coming up soon on my channel. Give me a like if you enjoyed this video. Comment below if you have any questions or comments or you just wanna say hey. I love people saying hey. Make sure you subscribe if you wanna keep up with what's going on next time. I will see you later. Bye.